Hi there, how are you? I was going to say good morning, but you know, it could be any time of the day that you're watching this, but it's morning for me. So anyway, I'd like to welcome you all to the next few sessions. There's 10 half hour videos in total for you to look at, give or take half an hour, give or take a few minutes, either way kind of thing. The plan is that it will be an introduction to watercolours. So you will learn the very basics of mixing colours, how to use wet on dry, how to do wet into wet, how to use a little bit of salt, how to use masking fluid, um, glazing, which is a term you hear of, it's really just, it's like layering. So just to become comfortable using watercolours, for those of you who are beginners, for those of you who have experience already, I would hope that, you know, it might be a refresher because we all need refreshers from time to time, don't we? And maybe you'll see something that, you know, I know that you don't know or that, you know, or whatever that I do that you think, oh, maybe I'll try that. That looks interesting. Um, also, you know, as I say, we can all do with learning, with retraining. I love looking at YouTube videos of some of my favourite artists, you know. Um, so... What I'm hoping to do in this, well, what I am going to do in this, in, in these videos, is you're going to go through colour mixing, very basic colour mixing, colour wheels, how to use transparency in watercolours, how to work wet on dry, how to work wet into wet, what it all means, using salt to create texture, using masking fluid to retain your whites, um, and just how to combine all of those. I'll be doing some actual videos of paintings, little paintings, little flower paintings. Um, also some portraits of people. I do do a little bit of drawing for you in the portraits of people. Just go through the principle of, you know, the anatomy of a face. Just very, very simple, nothing complicated. So that you and, you know, try these at your own level. We all start at different points when we look at something. So start where you are and build it up. You can go back over them. You can replay them. You can stop them, start them. You can do whatever you like with these videos, except share them. I just want to say a little bit about copyright. When you do workshops with people, the images that you produce are actually the copyright of the person who's doing the workshop. Um, so it's really not acceptable to um, uh, exhibit work that you've done in workshops unless you credit the person, at least say that it's a copy of a painting by so-and-so. And I know it sounds, but it's just, you know, artists own the images that they design, even if they allow you to copy it. You know, copying doesn't mean that you actually can say it's your image it's your object but it's not your image you know even if you buy a painting you own the painting but you don't owe the rights to the painting if i sell you a painting i can reproduce that you can't the image itself is the copyright of the original artist so anyway i just thought i'd um get that one out of the way now no just a little thing to say you might find sometimes while i'm talking i'm kind of looking down and around it's probably because I'm looking for something or maybe I've forgotten what I'm about to say and I'm looking, I have notes here in front of me. Um, do you know, so just bear with me. Okay, also you might find that halfway through a video like this one, the next one coming up, I'll be wearing different clothes. It's not that I've run off and had a clothes change, it's that it's a different day, probably. Okay, in the next section, I'm going to talk about some of the books that have really influenced me over time. You can get these from the library, I'm sure, because, you know, again, art books aren't cheap and you don't need to have them forever. Of course, I have millions of books because I, 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 I read the pictures, not the words. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you enjoy this little video about some of the books that I love. OK, so books, The Art of Watercolour by, who's it by? Charles Leclerc, one of the best watercolour books I ever bought and well worth the money. It goes into depth about different ways of working with watercolours. The puddle of process, it showed me, an, I mean, it's just showed me so much. Um, here, for example, on page 94, if you look at just these little exercises, you can see where I got a lot of my ideas from. 
um, well worth it. If you can find it, the library might be able to find it for you. The, the Art of Watercolour by Charles Leclerc. Another book that changed my wall painting life is called How to Make a Watercolour Paint Itself by the artist Nita Engel, an American artist. It's just beautiful to see what she does with just water, pouring water, throwing water at the page, squirting water at the page, all kinds of different things. Here we have an English artist, Shirley Trevor. Vena, and she has lots of different books. This one is Vibrant Watercolours. Again, um, it's probably out of print at this stage, but it's a beautiful book and it shows her process, which is very colourful and very experimental. She uses all kinds of things. These books, you know, you may not want to paint like these people, but it's certainly worth looking at to see what they do. And of course, the famous Charles Reed, who died not that long ago, who um, was a brilliant artist and gave amazing workshops. His books, this book by him, Pulling Your Paintings Together. It's a very useful book. Very useful, if just to look at how he lays things out. Lessons in see abstract seeing, seeing the big picture. It's just so much balancing neutrals and color. So much to learn in that book. It's really worth it. Winslow Homer, brilliant artist, American artist, lived in the UK for a long time. He was in the early last century, as far as I know. Um, he was quite famous for his sea faring paintings. 1890, rowing home. I mean, it could be a, it could be a Turner, couldn't it? It's absolutely beautiful. And of course, Turner. I have books by Turner, but. I don't know where they are. Turn is well worth looking at. David Poxon, a contemporary English artist, works with farmyard, um, all kinds of kind of rustic equipment and things like that. I started being interested in tractors and I discovered his work and um, he just, you know, brings it to another level. Okay. So that's some books for you to be. Okay, so I'm just going to have a little quick chat with you about materials. You can spend as much as you like on watercolours. And I do recommend, once you get through the initial stages, that you do spend money on paper. You can use excellent quality paints, but if the paper's not good, you're wasting your time unless you really, really know how to manipulate your paints, okay? So anyway, I'm just going to start with pencils. Um, any kind of pencil will do. I normally, that's a 2B. 2B and it's, um, what make is it? I don't know, it's just Faber-Castell, right? 2B, 4B, 6B. You can also get watercolour pencils, which are very good, because they wash away as you paint. So if you don't want a pencil to be seen in the drawing afterwards, but there's nothing wrong, it's perfectly acceptable to have pencil marks in watercolours, you know, because that's because they're transparent, so you're going to see the pencil. Um, but some people, you know, who don't understand seem to have a problem with that. All right, so the pen I've used is a Statler Tripless Fine Liner. I don't know if that's back to front or not, because it looks all right to me black one. So you can get them in loads of different colours. They have them in Tesco's and different places like that. Then the white pen that I've used in some of the exercises is a um, Signo Uniball white pigment pen. Right? Then the brush. Here comes the brush. Now, in some sections I said that this was synthetic. It's not. It's um, some kind of hair. Mongoose, maybe. I don't think it's mongoose. Anyway, it's from Cork Art Supplies. It's a mop brush and it's a size eight. Lovely brush. I would recommend getting that. You can get bigger. They're a little bit harder to work in the beginning, but you know, really you get a beautiful tip 
and you get a nice spread for a wash, okay? And a toy that I bought recently, because I'm very childlike, is, and I see the price is still on it actually. I got this in um, Spectrum in Wexford. It's a Rosemary & Co brush, which is a very good make for watercolour brushes anyway. Um, I'm not familiar with any other kind of, of their brushes. And you can see the, well, you can't see it. It's actually seven, 735, which is very good, really good. It's, it is synthetic, but it's lovely and it's fun. And I, I use it in one of the exercises. You don't need it to do the exercise, you know, but if you are buying any, if you're buying just one brush, buy what they call a round, this one, but it needs to have a good point. And it, when you wet it, it should hold loads of water. Okay, so that's brushes and pencils. Then paints. To start out with, these will do you fine. Right, again, it's probably back to front, but they are um, Winsor & Newton Cotman. They're students quality. Just buy three, well, buy six. You'll see in the videos, the six that you need. I'll tell you now. French Ultramarine, or just Ultramarine, which is a blue. Cobalt, which is another blue. See? Then you have two reds, cadmium red and crimson red. And then, have I two yellows? Cadmium yellow and lemon yellow. Now, see the slight difference in them, okay? The cadmiums are slightly orange. Now you can buy other colors as well. You can buy burnt umber if you want, if you do want to move on to another color. Burnt umber is a very good color to have. Um, and Payne's Grey is pretty good as well, and that's all I'm going to say about them. Now, masking fluid, art masking fluid. Um, this one again is Dale Rowney, but they all do them. And some people like to use a coloured one, which means that you can see it easier on the page. Right, I'm going to sh thoroughly confuse you now and show you the paints that I've been using lately. These. Beautiful, aren't they? Oh, they're like sweets. Anyway, never mind. Um, they are Gansei Tembai. Tembai? Gansei Tembai? The label's gone. Japanese, as far as I know. Probably, possibly Chinese. Um, Kuretaki. They're made by... They're Japanese. Japanese stop yeah. the video there because I dropped them. Never mind. They all fell out of the box. Just to show you, anyway, since they are out. They are full pans of watercolour. Now... Here's the thing, they're tubes. The watercolour comes out fairly fluid, fairly liquid. Not completely, you wouldn't be able to paint with it. Not, you shouldn't be able to paint with it. These, you have to re-wet them. You have to activate them, right, is what is the word. Um, I use a lot of pans. It depends on what size painting you're doing though. Sometimes if you're doing a large painting and you need a lot of um, paint, these can be quite time consuming. So it's 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 a personal preference. It depends on what way you work, okay? I'm just gonna put the lid back on them before I drop them again. Right, so that's them. I also use Daniel Smith, Schmincke. Um, what else do I use? Daniel Smith, I use Dale Rowney as well. I mean, I will use anything that has a nice color that I really like. I recently bought in the range in Carlo, these paints, which are called um, Nostalgia of Pastel. They're Chinese Mung Vo, and um, I'll be trialing them and you'll be able to see it on my YouTube channel when I get round to it, okay? Um, okay, so that's the paints and that's the brushes. Paper, this is what I've done an awful lot of these. It's Faber-Castell, which is probably backwards. See, anyway, it's Faber Castell and it's um, acid free 300 grams. When you're buying paper, please try to get at least 300 grams in weight. I mean, there's still different types, there's still different um, standards because some papers are made differently, some are made in the traditional manner where they are rag made. If any of you have ever made paper, you'll understand what that means. They're literally shredded up cotton and they make them and they make them in a mold and deckle and they're made that way some papers are made on the round they're just kind of like and what they do is they stamp the impression of the um the texture into them so they're not really as good as um and you'll pay the difference is the price you know that was i don't know what price that was probably 10 quid 
This is the next step of Buckingford. This is a lovely paper, St. Cuthbert's Mill in England. And it's again, 300 grams in weight. 140 pounds is 300 grams, remember that? And it's got 12 sheets. And that was probably, I don't know, it was probably about 20 euros, possibly, for that. You'll have to look that up. Now here's a lovely paper. Um, that's got a, a it's it's called CP knot, which means that it's got a slight texture to it. It's not a huge texture to it. This one here, Windsor and Newton. Does it tell me about it? Um, Windsor and Newton. Acarella. Where's the directions of it? Okay, here we are. So it's Acarella watercolor, grand hot pressed. Gran Satiné, which means that it's smooth and it's lovely for doing um, work that you don't want a grain, maybe work where you're doing a lot of fine detail. Another make, uh, that's Windsor & Newton, that wasn't that cheap either. None of these are very cheap and they get more expensive, trust me. This is Hahnmühle, Hahnmühle, H-A-H-N-E-M-U-H-L-E, -E. German paper very good again as well so this one is a cold pressed so it's got a slight texture to it um and then this is the paper of all papers arsh now this is about 50 euros 40 euros 50 euros for this a r c h e french paper again it's the same weight as the others it's 300 grams you can get arsh paper that is um, 600. You can get a lot of these papers, they do up to 600. And it's like working on card. It's absolutely amazing, right? You can do a lot to it. Um, so you get 20 sheets in this. So, you know, uh, it's 100% pure cotton and it's a block of paint, right? So it's actually stuck at the sides. So it doesn't buckle at all. Um, and then you kind of, you you put your a knife or your finger in there and you take it off when you've finished your painting. So it's really nice because watercolor paper, when it's wet, if you use a lot of water, will stretch and buckle and you need to stretch it out. Now, there's I haven't gone into stretching in this course either this time. I will if there's an appetite for it. Not many people do it nowadays, to be honest, because most of the paper is very good today. Um, but you can stretch it. You need um, gum tape to stretch your paper. So that's all I'm going to say about those, right? Um, sorry, I'm just throwing this piece of paper down here. I'm just looking at to see if I've covered everything. So look, um, all I can say is we have these sessions. Give it a go. If it doesn't work, give it another go. <laughs> Honestly, because I've been painting watercolours for, ooh, I don't know, God, way too long, 30 years now. I'm probably started out in college, but gave it up for years um, because art is hard to sustain. So look, give it a go. And hopefully we will have some kind of a, a, an online meetup maybe at some stage so that we can discuss either before or after the course, how, you know, what was, what worked, what didn't work for you all. I'm very interested in feedback. Um, it's my first time doing this. So, you know, be kind. Well, you, you know, just if you have an opinion, give it. You know, um, let us know somehow. Um, so I would like to find a way for you to give feedback, and we're going to work on that hopefully. Okay, I've probably said this in a few other places, but anyway, I'd like to just say to you, give everything a go. Start with the early steps if you really feel that you need the experience, or that if you haven't done it in a long time. Just, you know, go through all the videos, give it a go, do your best. Remember, it's only a piece of paper. And um, I look forward to finding out how you got on with it all at some stage in the future.